Hey guys, so I've been playing around with this new technique for creating uh, hair in X-Gen and I can't take full credit for this. Uh, I actually saw this in another tutorial called Fast Fur Guide Placement uh, with my X-Gen and I'll link that down below. Anyway, in that tutorial they were talking about using this technique for short hair fur and I thought that maybe I could take this technique and then apply it to you know other longer hairstyles or, or grooms. Uh, and so that's what I've been playing around with and I want to share with you guys today. A little bit of a clickbaity title. I don't think uh, it's a perfect, perfect solution, but this will quickly get you, I want to say like 85, 90% of the way there. Um, and then with modifiers and a few adjustments to the guides, you know, you'll, you can have a pretty good looking uh, groom. So first things first, in whatever sculpting program you use, uh, I think I built these in ZBrush, you want to model your hair and I have these uh, in two parts, I have a front and a back, and I suppose you could, you know, break this up into as many pieces as you'd like, or just have a single piece. Um, but the only caveat to this is that you need to have UVs on these. So, um, these are just quick and easy. Yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure, just done with UV mastered. They don't have to be pretty, they just have to be there, otherwise you can't use paint effects on them. So once you have this challenge you set up, you have it sculpted how you want, and this is really just about getting the volume. Don't worry about like geometry flow or anything because I've seen other techniques where you select um, individual edge loops and then convert those to guides. This is a little bit different. We're going to be painting curves or, well, paint effects that get converted to curves directly on the surface. So select your mesh, go to generate, say make paintable and then from there same tab generate and right above that paint effects tool and you want to select the option box and make sure it draws meshes off because you just want to be getting that curve and then from there you want to just start drawing out your curves they don't have to be perfect because you're going to actually rebuild them later when you convert them to guides and this is the time, you know, you really want to be looking at your reference and seeing how the flow of the hair follicles go, where they attach to the scalp. And they don't have to be all directly from the front to all the way to the back. Like, um, for example, on this piece here, generate a paintable. So I don't necessarily need to take a curve and then have it all go all the way back here. Um, shorters, um, well, you want to take into account the length of the hair, probably, but probably from like there to there. And then you can just have them like overlap like this. And I want to say actually more is better with these, I've found. Uh, because some might not end up working well and you might end up deleting some of them later so it helps to have really good coverage with these guides. So let me just place a couple more. Ooh, mine's being really slow. Oops. Um, you have to do one mesh at a time. I should have mentioned that earlier. So that those last couple strokes I made were under here. Uh, kind of a happy accident because I should have mentioned that. Yeah, so um, if you do have your meshes split up like this, you got to make sure you then select the one you want. Say so make paintable, and then you can draw on that. Sometimes you'll get this. I don't know how well you can see. It's very bright, but your curve will have a little hiccup in there. Uh, and that's fine because we are, gonna, like I said before, we're going to rebuild these, and that'll just be smoothed out. All right. And one more thing you can do is, for example, if you have um, the, the hair is layered and you have hair that's like overlapping, for example, in this front section of the hair, in the reference he has some hair that's like going straight up this way, and then underneath he, he has some hairs that are going like this. So what you can do is you can lay, lay them out like this, and even though they're on the same layer, just group them together and then save that group for later. And then you can physically lower them down with your uh, your move tool 
or you can um, select those guides only, freeze out the rest and just smooth those down or just like lower those down. And that way you can create that layered hair effect. But essentially what we're doing here is just like creating a shell. So let me actually undo this because I'm just, I've actually gone through this whole process um, before, but I'm just gonna be showing you guys with just these few hair cards that I have drawn out or uh, hair strokes. So let me group these together. Um, so let's say we have all of this done and I'm going to hide this and this I'm actually going to be redoing this because I wasn't 100% happy with uh, how this came out but that's one of the nice things about this technique is um, it's really fast and you can iterate and if you weren't happy with the, the flow of your hair um, the way it was laid out originally you can go back I'm actually going to um, delete some of these on the sides and, and redo them. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just gonna run through this process. So these are my paint effects drawn out and on top of the mesh. And then from this point, you can hide your hair mesh and you want to bring up, let's see. You wanna bring up whatever mesh you're gonna be doing your extra description on. And so in this case, I have hair plates, you know, a lot of people to work directly off the mesh, whatever it's gonna be, you know, bring that up and then make this a live surface. All right, so what you wanna do from here, once you have all of your paint effect strokes laid out, you wanna go under that group, select all of them, and then go up to modify, convert, Pain effects to curves. And then it's going to give you a million little groups for each one. Yeah. So what you want to do, a good way to, and, and it's not just one group, there's actually like nested groups in here for this curve. So what I do is I hide these pain effects. all my geometry so I can just select them in scene and then control G and then that will group them all in a single group and then you can just select all these and delete them you don't need them all right so now that we have these the next thing that we need to do uh, and the reason that we made our hair plate uh, live is we need to select the first CV of all of these curves and attach it to the hair plate. So you can do these in groups. It might help to just do like the left side and then do the right side. I'll show you. I'll just select all of them and show you how I do it. So select first CV, make sure that Soft selection is off. You don't want to be selecting multiple CVs. And then I usually hit uh, scale, R, it's the shortcut, and then I just tap it. Oops. So this is going to give you mostly good results, but some of them see have like kind of bugged out and gone and the first CV has found whatever it thought was the closest point. So this is why I was saying earlier that it might be better to, let me go back to object mode. Um, just select, you know, whatever is cool, you know, relatively on that same side. Modify or select first CV, and that way you can go to your move tool and just kind of move it over. And then maybe move them a little bit like this. And that I think is a little bit better result. And then uh, you can select individual ones like this, and then the G key will you know, make that last selection. Then you can just slide it. This will give you a little bit of trouble for whatever reason, it doesn't want to move where you move it to. But you just move those into place. I think it's worth taking the time 
to get that first CV right where you want it to be. See how like these are like overlapping? I would take this one and oops. And then uh, you know place it closer to the edge of that scalp. And then make sure this one wasn't overlapping that one. This part can be a little bit time consuming, but it's still a lot faster than, you know, manually placing the guides in there. And most of them are about where they need to be. So, all right. So let's say once you've gone through this entire process and placed all those first CVs exactly where you wanted them, then it's time to convert these to guides. All right, so once you've gone through this whole process of placing the, the first CV exactly where you want it on the scalp, and this is a version that I'd completed earlier, um, and it probably took me, you know, 15, 20 minutes just to go through and, and place all those CVs where, where I needed them to be. And most of them were in the right position to begin with. So once I have these uh, curves, and then for the sake of this, I'll just make a new hairstyle on the scalp. Make sure you turn live surface off. Go in your extra and interactive groom to create interactive groom splines. I'll just call this hair demo. Create. Uh, and then from here, what you want to do is select all your curves. Go in here. Well, first you have to create modifier guide then select all your curves then control select the guides go in your attribute editor and say use selected curve as guide and then there'll be two options here Del delete curves and preserve dynamic link uh, i usually delete or i usually leave both of these off delete curves i see no reason to, to check because you might want to save these for later and edit them later and then preserve dynamic link will link your curves to your guides and so that when you edit one or move one around it'll affect one or the other uh, and i just leave both of these off so apply and close and then you have uh, your hair following these guides pretty closely all right a few more steps to take the first thing you need to do is your cv count on your guides is going to be insanely high because of the way the paint effects were converted. So select this or XGM spline base and then go into your attribute editor CV count. It's yeah, 162. You probably want to leave this around like 15. Anywhere from like 10 to 20 is usually good depending on the length of the hair. And small note, if you're doing curly hair, you gotta bump this way up like into the 30s, 40s. So rebuild. And when you rebuild this, it'll actually smooth it out slightly. So see how this is like coming straight off the scalp? And that was because we just took that last CV and like just jammed it right to the, the scalp. Uh, rebuilding it will actually kind of smooth. One, five. Yeah, rebuilding them will, will kind of like smooth out that transition from the where the follicle meets the scalp to the shape you want it. You can re you know, if you want to shrink the mass a little bit too, you can, you know, rebuild this a couple times, but you're going to lose volume, but you might want that. And then you probably want to also up your CV count for your hair. You usually want to match them. I think the closer they are together, the, the more they'll follow each other. So yeah, a little bit closer. And then from here, you can just Hide your curves, and you've got a pretty good start to your hair. Pretty good start to your hair. And then from here, you know, you can watch my other video on like uh, modifiers in the X Gen Interactive Groom Toolkit, but I'll usually, you know, add a, a clump. Well, I'll usually add two, two clumps and a, uh, a noise. Clump one, 
so it's like two. So two, probably like thirty. Oh, and then one thing I'll point out here is, you see how these are like shooting out? That means that I didn't have enough guide coverage uh, when I drew out my when I drew out my curve. So that's why it's really important to get a, more than you think you're going to need with the, the curves when you're drawing them out. But to fix this, all I have to do is go into my XGen Interactive Groom, turn this on. And then under guide, no, under transform from curve, say add modifier, sculpt. You want to turn on edit. And then in the attribute editor, you want to say place brush. And then place a guide right there. And then, you know, freeze it off, invert the frozen and then place it where, wherever you want. And it looks like there needs to be one over here too. Oh, anyway, I've got other tutorials uh, if you wanna go over you know, how to, the, my guide workflow. But anyway, uh, I hope this technique was useful for you. Uh, I've been using it a lot. Uh, it's a you know, really good, quick way to visualize the hair before you go in and start placing guides and it gives you a really good jump start on you know the the, fi the final product if this was helpful for you please leave me a like comment down below if you had any questions about what i went over you know like share subscribe all that really really helps me you guys and i'm going to start trying to put out tutorials on a more regular basis you know at least one one or two a week so look forward to that so until next time guys thanks for watching